So today on Learning in Box, we're going to have a fun conversation um, about amazing science programs um, that are happening in and around our community. We're continuing um, that conversation. And as the new academic year gets ready to start, uh, we get to have a special treat today to talk about a program called WOW, um, programs at OSU. We're going to learn all about that here in uh, just a second. But as always, I'm super excited uh, for the conversation. And joining us today, I have three wonderful guests um, from The Ohio State University. Um, leading our conversation today um, is Jessica Caton Diefenbach, who is the WOW program coordinator for the last five years at The Ohio State University. So Jessica, welcome to the program. Hi, thank you for having me. And joining Jessica are two Ohio State students, um, third year students or juniors, depending on how you want to think about that, um, who have been participating in the WOW program for a number of years and actually most recently have been involved in the design and development of some new programming. And so I'm hoping that we're going to get to talk about that a little bit today. So uh, joining Jessica, uh, we have Brianna um, Agamesu and Grace Benneke, um, both from The Ohio State University. So Brianna and Grace, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. So I want to leap right in. Um, very, very high level, Jessica. Help our listeners who come to us from all over the world um, understand what exactly, first and foremost, what is the WOW program? What's its background and, and sort of history, that 100,000 foot view as we get into the weeds here in a little while? Yeah, sounds great. So the WOW program, which stands for Wonders of Our World, um, is a science outreach program at The Ohio State University, which brings creative hands-on science experiments to an elementary school classrooms, grades K through five. Uh, the program is founded by Dean Dr. Susan Elisic in 1999. She currently also works here at, at Ohio State as the Dean in Natural Resources and at um, Actually, I think it's uh, natural sciences. I'm sorry, natural sciences, <laughs> mathematics. Um, it's a so, big institution and it it's always moving big. and changing and relabeling and renaming. So out of full fairness to okay. you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. She used to be the chair of the chemistry department as well. And so she started the program uh, back when her daughter was in elementary school, um, kind of seeing a need to uh, focus on a science outreach and getting um scientist into the classroom. So the, today the WOW program works specifically with Columbus City Schools. We adopt three schools each for three years. And in the three-year period, we cover a variety of science uh, topics, anywhere from biology, chemistry, physics. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about forensic science. So everything in between. Um, we, we adopt the school and we work with all the teachers there. So about 46 teachers from the schools and about a thousand elementary school students a year. Um, but it's a, a collaborative program. So not only do we work with Ohio State science and engineering undergraduates that are in either the Choose Ohio First program, the STEM um, Exploration and Engagement um, Scholars Program, um, or just volunteers who are interested in our program. Um, we also work with Battelle um, and CAS, which is a, a shared partner that we have with the PASS Foundation. Yeah. Yeah, all of those are shared partners. So uh, oh, wonderful awesome. context there. Yes, thank you very much, Jessica. So um, I think a couple of things that you you touched on that I think are super, super important. So one of the first ones is that there is largely, at least in the U.S., um, and it doesn't apply strictly to every place in the U.S., so this is an overgeneralization, but I think it's a fair assessment that because we don't test in the United States for competency in sciences, of any description in the elementary school and very little, quite frankly, in, in middle school. We don't necessarily even put a lot of emphasis on it in some places in high school, depending on the state that you're in. Mm -hmm. um, so that means that by the time we, we have students show up in post-secondary, we cannot, as university faculty or as post-secondary um, educators, you know, actually ensure that our students have the foundational needs um, in science that have been met, right? And so that was part of the genesis of, of this program is to ensure that at the earliest stages we can get science, appropriate science, really rigorous science. So not just the fun activities, but the deep thinking around science, right? Into the hands of elementary students. So um, Brianna, I'm gonna turn kind of to you because 
when I looked at the bioinformation that you sent over, I was thrilled to see, for starters, um, that you have an interest in forensic science. And forensic science, it's, it's a tough, complicated, um, very integrated and intricate field in many, many ways. And it's often one of those things that has got the cool wow factor. We have a forensic science program here at PASS that we started in 2009, I think it is, and it's been incredibly popular. But it's also a program that teachers are terrified of, right? Because it seems so complex and yet kids are interested because they see it everywhere on television. So, um, Rihanna, so share with us a little bit about why your passion for forensic science and how that meets up with WOW. Um, I, wanna, I wanna ask you really quickly about your involvement in WOW and sort of the, the passion place for what you do or what you aspire to do and how that translates for you. Okay, so actually, I'll just start off with a little, a little bit of the bio about me so everyone else can sure. understand. Um, so I'm majoring in criminology with a minor in ASL, American Sign Language, and a minor in forensic anthropology. Um, and then, so that translates. So I've been working with WOW for about two going on three years now. Mm -hmm. And I was super excited when we decided we we're going to do a forensic science unit because we've done other units that I've loved. Um, but I definitely was very excited for this one because it was right up my alley. Um, so I was able to give my input about correct terminology mm -hmm. and different things like that and help um, give context to certain topics. Um, I definitely mainly worked um, with the interviews and creating like the storyline more for it so that we have correct words being used. And I made it where the kids would be able to fully understand what was going on. Um, and then towards the end of the unit development, I was able to create a card-like version of the unit that allowed it to be more game-like so that, you know, it wasn't super, oh, we're reading a lot. It was more yeah. fun and games. So. Yeah, and that's wonderful because what we know is engaging kids is one of the most powerful things that we're we we've been able to do. So that's that's really exciting as well. Um, and so, Grace, I want to circle back around then, sort of with the follow up with this with you because your background, um, you're studying chemistry, um, which is you know completely you know sort of integrated across all of this um, and and the work that happens and. You you were also involved in the creation of, you know, new lesson opportunities. And that's not something, quite frankly, that happens very often to an undergrad student in a random department in the university, right, finds themselves in a program where you actually get to help co-design something new. So talk with us a little bit about that and that experience. Yeah, so developing this forensic science unit was part of my capstone project for my STEM engagement and exploration scholars program. Um, I wanted to work with WOW just because I loved the program my freshman year. And even though we did it online, this was still such an amazing opportunity. Um, Jessica and I talked a little bit about backwards design before we even started talking about the unit which was very interesting. It's not something I knew about just because I'm a chemistry major and that's yeah. a little bit more on the education side. But it talked about how you want to start with your ideas and then like build from the ground up. And it was so fun to see it all come together at the end, just starting with very bare bones and then everybody working together to make the unit. Right. Absolutely. So, so Jessica, share with us just a little bit. So how help us sort of set the stage for, for what um, Grace and Brianna have been talking about working in terms of thinking about the creation of these new units. So from a wow perspective, how do you make decisions around sort of the, when do you, you work on new content as opposed to delivering the, the wonderful and amazing content that you you've, you've been able to do over the years. So, so help Help us sort of understand the why. why. Why do this unit? Why do this unit now? Yeah. Um, so in um, honestly, every uh, year that I've been helping out, I always try to introduce one new unit um, in either something that maybe aligns with my interest or maybe a, 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 a unit that seems to be aligned with the teacher need or, or the mm -hmm. school need. Um, so the WOW program has about 10 to 15 units that we repeat um, once every every three years um, mm -hmm. to just make sure we're focusing on a variety of science topics for the schools. Um, but 
in the past few years, we we did an ecology unit was our new one. Um, then we did a, a bird unit. And then because we were doing things virtually, we felt like this was a really good year to do a a kind of a, an unusual program. Um, so the forensic science unit really incorporates not only just one topic, it's several different science mm-hmm. uh, disciplines. And I think that's where we had the flexibility uh, to, to do that, doing a, a remote learning and not having uh, the programs be uh, so back to back because there's not a lot of time to kind of plan uh, for mm-hmm. the programs. We usually have new units developed kind of in the summer and so that it can be implemented a few months later. Um, so for this one, it was it was just great to have, we had about 16 OSU students that were helping out in different teams. We had uh, experiment development team. We had a uh, video um, script writing team. So they got to write the scripts for the video production team. We recorded uh, via Zoom. So it was video instructions for the teachers and the, mm-hmm. the students. And then a video editing team, which we're still kind of in the process of editing the videos um, to then finalize them and and then uh, give them to to the teachers. But we just felt it was, it just seemed uh, like a good time to focus on forensics chemistry, forensics biology, um, interviews, and kind of more a little bit of an anthropology side as well. So it it worked out uh, pretty well. And um, I've worked in the past with another STEM EE student to uh, to actually get a new unit developed. So when Grace was interested in, in doing the capstone project back in summer 2020, it seemed like a great time to mm-hmm. introduce a new unit. Um, and one other thing uh, about the forensic science unit that you actually touched on, Annalise, um, is it's it's a, a complex topic that mm-hmm. isn't focused on a lot. Um, anytime you're looking through like lesson plans, it seems to be very middle school and high school mm-hmm. focused. Mm-hmm. So we were trying to make it basic enough um, so that they could uh, learn about about forensics, but also um, enjoy and and maybe be more interested in it uh, later on. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's, you know, forensic science is a, it's a fabulous, um, it's a fabulous topic. And as I alluded to earlier, you know, PAST has a, had a forensics program for a number of years. And, and in fact, one year we had a school district, a rural school district in another state um, that made the decision that they wanted to do a big sort of epic, and it was epic, um, sort of um, um, launch event at the start of a new school year where they were the entire school district. This is a tiny little town, right? So, you know, you can you can easily have a sort of K-12 experience um, in, a, in a little town like that. And they had us come in and we took over the school for an entire week. We worked with the teachers and we ran a forensic science program for an entire week. That's all the school did. And we did it K-12. Um, um, and so, and it is because it lends itself to so many different things, right? And the little kids in elementary school are doing one pieces of it and middle school is doing something a little bit different and high school, something yet again, right? And forensic science is great because you can scaffold it in so many ways. But that said, but that said, you know, part of the tough part is how you make the decisions around what is appropriate and when at those various grade levels. So Brianna, I want to ask you a little bit, at just with your forensic lens and recognizing sort of, you know, you thinking about it, um, you know, with that approach, what was the hardest part of taking and distilling this really complex field down into helping the rest of the team be effective? So how do you, how do you decide what pieces are good at elementary? So that definitely was one of our biggest challenges is making sure we're using the correct words. So for instance, instead of using like criminal, we would say suspect because we didn't want any of the kids to be like, well, I don't want to be a criminal. I don't want to be a bad guy. So there was a lot of things that we had to make sure that, you know, we were watching how we were wording it. We also, a big thing in Uh, forensic science, when you do things in schools, especially in high schools, they're like, oh, there was blood on the crime scene. We didn't want to include any of that because little kids don't need to, you know, have to experience that. No trauma, right? No trauma. Right, exactly. That's not, we're here for fun (laughs) and education, not traumatizing the kids. Um, So we definitely had to make something that was easier. So like 
fingerprints, smudges, things like yeah. that, not yeah. blood. Because that's what a lot yeah. of people think when they think forensic science yeah. is yeah. blood and murder, things like that. And we made it fun. Someone took someone's Buckeye, something like yeah. that. Yeah. So that was definitely the biggest thing that was kind of like tricky is making sure it was very kid friendly, but not boring at the same time. Um, and it was still something very interesting. So yeah. yeah, awesome. And that is exactly what, what I was trying trying to get at. I mean, you've got to make some pretty um, intriguing sort of decisions. You know, on the flip side of that, Grace, this was your capstone, uh, capstone project work. And so I'm really, really curious as a lot of the thinking is happening and you're doing all the backward design. And I love that. So you're fully enmeshed in design thinking because that is the absolute best way to be able to create educational modules. I love that. Thank you for, for that. Um, but, you know, as you're making these types of decisions, you know, kind of along the way, you're learning an awful lot. And, you know, it's not easy to create um, this new content. And um, it sounds to me like it hasn't been implemented or deployed quite yet. Right. So will it be deployed this year? That's one of my questions. And then the second piece to that really is, you know, as you were going through this process, where were the stumbling blocks for you, right? We'll, we'll get to how incredibly wonderful it is, but I also wanted to, to talk a little bit about celebrating the fact that A, it wasn't easy, and B, you know, there were some things you had to learn along the way that I would assume were a little bit unexpected as it relates to creating content. So share with us a little bit about some of those things. Yeah, so one of the things we also had to think about was what kind of supplies and everything that we were going to be able to um, deploy or that students would have at home to be able to mm -hmm. use. That was one of the major things because all of the different sections like our biology section and our chemistry section had different components to them that we had to think about. Might people have these or might we have to send them out? Things like that. Um, Jessica might be able to speak more about if it's being mm -hmm. deployed this year or not, but it was just very interesting because everybody worked on different parts. Like I focused more on the introduction and conclusion, like the bookends of everything. Okay. Um, but we did have students working on the biology section and the chemistry section. And some of those students had to think about um, the level of what the content was like for the chemistry section. For example, we did some flame tests, which is, pretty high level mm -hmm. for these elementary kids, but they were able to do it in videos so that the students could still get that experience and learn more about it in a way that they would understand it. Yeah, absolutely. So, so Jessica, uh, same question back to you then, as you're working with the students to sort of build out and design. So where do you see, I'm, I'm really curious. So the reason I hear, let me set the stage. The reason I'm asking this question, right, is because there's this, this common myth, right, that anybody can create content that is standard aligned and will be super successful with students. You know, I'm a scientist, I'm a research scientist at university or in a lab at this company, right? You know, and, and I think that I can create a thing, right, that can go into schools and it will really help kids, you know, get engaged or understand what it is that I do. And, you know, if that were the case, that would be wonderful because there are so many people that are passionate about what they do out there in the world. But the reality is that doesn't always translate into the ability to be plug and play sort of into a school setting, meet all the needs, the level of rigor, plus the entrance and the engagement that a school or a teacher needs and something that will engage and grab the kids so that they will consider this thing, you know, down the road as an experience that they have. Jessica, it's not as easy as sometimes we, we offhandedly might think that it is. So how do you help a team of undergrads understand and wrestle with the decision-making process as it relates to what's going to make a great module? Yeah, that's, I think anytime we have a new unit that we definitely take that more into consideration yeah. because the other units have been going on for, yeah. for so long. Um, this year was definitely a little bit more unique because it's virtual and right. the WOW program is mostly hands-on. And so it, how to make it still hands-on with a virtual component. Um, and going back to your kind of question uh, beforehand, you were mentioning when it's going to be implemented. We're hoping uh, this uh, coming semester, um, we're just kind of working on getting some of the supplies and yeah. getting the last minute edits on the videos. Um, but 
now that the students will actually be in the classroom, we can um, not only provide some of the supplies, but we can maybe even uh, provide a little bit of input being there too. But for the most part, it will be a virtual kind of um, mm-hmm. a working experiment, um, just especially with the, the beginning of this year, it might yeah. be a little unusual. And, and a it little might be hard. a little hybrid still, right? Exactly. Yeah, so it, COVID it would, influences, right? Yeah. Yep. And so it wouldn't hurt. And, and honestly, the WOW program always, we really try to uh, align with the WOW uh, uh, sorry, not with throughout, but the um, uh, the standards through Ohio, so the science standards, and just make sure that we're we're helping with uh, test scores. So especially with the the fifth grade classroom, so we have a light unit, a sound unit, because those are right. uh, common things that are are um, tested in the curriculum for for the fifth graders, and we we really do try to. Um, to kind of uh, align with the standards, but also we have to do some experiments and units that maybe won't necessarily align, but will give the same concepts of science that will be useful in other disciplines. Right. So we always start with the scientific method because the basis of science is the scientific method. Right. And every one of our experiments kind of focuses on that. And even in, in this unit, they are going through the steps of the scientific method to kind of figure out who uh, who ate the Buckeyes. And so yeah. um, we, we're not necessarily trying to replace the curriculum. We're just trying to enhance and just um, kind of make it a little bit better and maybe more engaging and in a, in a normal year, more hands-on. Um, at the same time, we, also, you know, we are talking about basic level science and trying to get the, the kids interested in it, but we're also introducing them to scientists or budding scientists. So they get to see, oh, you know, um, um, if, if Brie is, is talking to them and she's a criminology major, if they're interested in this, you can major in this mm-hmm. and, and go into it. And they might have never heard about these majors. And honestly, before working here, um, some of the majors that my students have, I had never yeah. heard of right. before yeah. either. So there's so many uh, different disciplines and they're really role models uh, to my students. So it's kind of like a twofold. So not only does our program help, you know, get students interested in science and get them excited and kind of learn some new things, but they also get to be introduced to a scientist. And uh, and then the college student gets the experience to, if you can explain a, a concept like why the sky is blue to a kindergarten student, well, you're going to be great in your, your career years later because you can um, explain a, a simple concept to, to somebody who's younger. Yeah, so. absolutely. You can. Right. And it, there's no better way to know your topic than to teach it. You know, exactly. I, I tell my students that all the time when their eyes get really big. Hey, I want you to come in and do this thing. And they're like, oh, my gosh. Um, but that is the reality. So, Grace, um, so share with us just a little bit since this is your, your sort of your capstone work. So lay out for for our listeners the the concepts or the or the content. So, you know, I, I'm a teacher. This module is going to come into I'm one of these three elementaries that, that the WOW program is, is has adopted for, for my three years. And and we're going to do this forensic science unit. What what are the components of this unit, um, you know, sort of as a teacher? So I just want everybody to, to understand sort of what's going to be in this thing. Sure. So we start out with the setting the scene, not the crime scene, but just like the scenario that we set up um, where the students were on a field trip and they all got a box of Buckeye treats and they made their way to the union to eat them. And then a girl went to the bathroom or a student went to the bathroom. And when they came back, their Buckeyes had been eaten. And all oh, that was no. left was a mask. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 all that was left behind was a student's mask. Um, there were some paint smudges and some fingerprints on the Buckeye box. So now we lead it to the students to work through the activities that we set up to collect the clues and ultimately put together which student took the Buckeyes. So they go into the um, biology activities, which involved um, more of the fingerprint analysis. Mm -hmm. They were able to um, do their own fingerprints, do some fingerprints from the crime scene, learn that fingerprints are unique to everyone. So that's how we can use them to uh, connect clues. And then we did a little bit further 
with the biology unit and we did a strawberry DNA analysis, mm-hmm. which is a really common yeah, activity. Yeah, it's yeah. One, yeah, it's one of my favorites where they are able to extract the strawberry DNA and get to see that that is what people can take from crime scenes. Mm-hmm. And then for the chemistry unit, they did paint chip analysis with the flame tests. And that's like mm-hmm. the students walk them through that in a video more so than that one being something that they did. Um, and then they also looked at the hair for the chemistry unit, which was very interesting. Mm-hmm. And then for the section that Brianna did, which was the um, interview section, the students give alibis and they give where they were. They tell a little bit about themselves, like if they have peanut allergies. So the students can go through and rule out who it could have been and solidify their answer. And then they wrap up at the end with choosing who they think did it and why. So, well, and so how long, Rihanna, <laughs> then, how long does it take to do this unit? Is this a day? Is this a week? Can it be broken into a number of different pieces or parts? So that's part one of my question, because I like to ask complex questions. And so the part two of my question then is, as you were working with the team, building this out, was, did you did anything surprise you in terms of the way that you were thinking about, well, could we actually take that concept, translate it in such a way that these little kids, right, are going to be able to understand this complex science? So, yeah, um, it was definitely a hard time thinking about different topics. Like, you're like, we want to include DNA. You're like, how are we going to show them DNA? So the strawberry uh, experiment, which everyone has done, and I, to this day, I love that experiment. It's one of my favorite things I've done in high school. Um, So from that, it was very helpful. And then the fingerprints, that was even um, something that I felt would be really important like informational to the children, because I don't think a lot of kids know that everyone has unique prints. So that was really interesting also. Um, And then just matching the paint and then the hair. Um, So when I was going through the interviews and creating like the card, because we made cards with uh, all the kids' Mm -hmm. identities to make it easier for them. um, It was really a challenge of also making it not too simple for them Mm -hmm. by saying like, okay, well, this one had a bad alibi alibi but everything else matches up because then it would be too quickly like discovered so we had to make sure we were going through and we were matching up things so I had to go back through all the other units to make sure that I was matching the correct information and going through and that everything um, was correlating yeah absolutely and And so do you think Brianna that when it's all said and done right so if if a if a kid were to reach out to you and say hey you know I want to be you know a forensic scientist or I want to be an anthropologist or I want to be a chemist right and and so what would you say to that kiddo as uh, as sort of a next Step. I'm really curious because programs come into schools all the time, right? We inspire kids, but very few programs actually have a mechanism. So one of the things I like about the WOW program when, when Jessica and I first met and we're talking about it is the fact that you stick with these schools, these teachers, right? And ultimately we, with these kiddos for a three-year period of time. So it's not a one and done, right? So how would you, whether it be a teacher that says, I've got a kid that's interested in this, or, or even just a kid reaching out to any, any one of you, your, yourselves, how how do you help then a, a teacher, a student, families, the community keep kids engaged in that thing that they're interested in? So like what are the low hanging sort of next steps they could take even outside of, of the existing program to ensure that kid actually grows up to one day be Brianna and study, uh, you know, forensic science or to be Grace and become a chemist and so on and so forth. Or Jessica, who I, I hear is a bit of a bird nerd. <laughs> Brie, so do you want me to answer that, that question yeah <laughs> I just had a in. I just have a small input so I was going to say okay. from my perspective um, of being still a college student so it's not yeah. like I can give them like well I work here you can come yeah. visit um, but I during the summer I actually worked uh, with a nonprofit as a summer camp I was a project coordinator so this kind of tied into me having to be around uh, 
children a lot. And a lot of times they'd ask me like, oh, what do you do? And I would tell them like, I'm in college. And then I tell them what I do. And they're like, that's cool. How do I do that? So my big advice to children um, and like students would be do research. And I know that sounds like a big word to them. So they're like, what's that? And I'm like, Google, you guys are always on your phone. Like the campers were always on their phones. So I'm like yeah. doing simple research and reading a book and all these different things will be a good setup for you. And then like talking to parents and explaining to them, there are a lot of different resources, even online or, you know, just doing a quick search. There's many things that you can do. So yeah. just from my perspective, that's what I would say. Awesome. Um, and yes, yeah, so uh, kind of adding on to that. Um, so Annalise, you actually mentioned uh, like how long this um, yeah. unit should be. Um, I usually our units are we have like one visit in the classroom for 45 okay. to an hour. So this is obviously much longer than that. Um, I would say if, you know, the teacher is able to kind of implement it, maybe um, an experiment or two a week. So maybe within a month period, they can um, figure out kind of who did it um, would be probably the the best timeline. I mean, it if they wanted to do it all in one day, that would be great. But it will also depend on if the teachers have uh, have that amount of time right. um, to kind of devote to it. But what we do for, for our programs and uh, especially for our new ones is we try to do pre and post survey questions to see if we can really help the teachers out. And so we actually did um, a pre survey question for some of our teachers. We didn't hear back from everybody, but we did kind of um, ask the teachers to ask their students, um, what did they think about forensic science? Do you, you know, when they hear the term a forensic scientist, what do they think of? And um, exactly what uh, the students replied is what we were expecting um, were the misconceptions that yeah. Sherlock Holmes, Inspector yeah. Gadget, that is a forensic scientist. Yeah. And, you know, you or I or, you know, any of these people could actually become a forensic science. They didn't think about that. It was only somebody in the media or CSI. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. We, you know, we're taking that and uh, we have a misconceptions section that kind of addresses it for the kids. Um, and then uh, Brie actually made sure to add, um, uh, well, Brie and Grace, um, we have forensics detectives cards of actual forensics uh, scientists that are out there. And oh, this is what they, they majored in and this is where you can work. Um, so with our post-survey questions, we hope that if students are engaged and interested, we can potentially connect them. Um, we started during the pandemic a meet and greet where we had our um, CAS and Battelle scientists kind of zoom in or Google mm -hmm. meet in to a classroom and just talk about their career. And yeah. they got asked very interesting questions that had nothing to do with their career. But of course, of yeah, them... <laughs> that's what little kids do. That's the best part. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was what what's your favorite video game? I don't yeah. you know, like yeah. not not um, what what were the uh, classes that you had to excel yeah. at to to go into this career? And so we would really like to actually interview forensic scientists, um, anthropologists, and have them talk to the students after to answer those maybe questions that we couldn't um, answer in our unit. So we always try to, uh, with our teachers, we, we leave them not only with a lesson plan so they can do this experiment again, we're hoping to also provide a little bit of supplies too, but then also connections to OSU faculty and staff mm -hmm. um, and to other organizations. So if the students are interested and want to continue their learning, then, then they can. Um, yeah. So it's not just doesn't have to be okay. Um, we we talked about this unit, and um, three or four months later, we can't talk about it again. We we would love to to kind of keep the conversation going, um, especially because it is an interesting topic that focuses on so many different units or, or sorry, different science disciplines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I love the fact that you're thinking about what what's the next iteration of all of these opportunities um, um, for all of these kiddos. Um, you know, um, Grace, um, I always like to sort of leave the program with recognizing the fact that there are folks out in the world that are listening to this that don't have access necessarily to WOW. They're not in our local Columbus community, right? And so, um, and again, I'll toss this sort of out, but, you know, I always like to 
leave folks recognizing that somebody's listening to this and saying, hey, you know, I think maybe I could do that. So, so Grace, if there is a, is a budding teacher out there that says, hey, that's a really, really cool thing, right? I'm interested, for example, in chemistry, thinking about, you know, what you're studying in your background, and I want to do some simple things in my classroom. What did you learn through this process that would allow you as a chemist to say to a teacher that you couldn't support or was even from afar, hey, do these couple of things? What was that sort of aha, low-hanging fruit moment for you that you learned through this process? Yeah, I would say that it's actually a lot more attainable than you would think it would be. It does require a lot of work, but the outcome is definitely worth putting in that time. Um, There's a lot of ways that you can take something like forensic science and bring it down to a level for the kids to experience it in a real like forensic science way um, for them to explore and get good experience with some introductory level topics like fingerprinting that people do use every day in the real world. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of activities that you could go a million different places with. But yeah. it definitely just does take some time. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Same question to you, Brianna. So that teachers out there saying, hey, I want to do this. What's that first thing that you would tell them to do? That low hanging fruit um, piece from your experience here? Um, I definitely would say basically where I started to even get the interviews going is Googling it. Um, so that's a big help. And I'm glad that we live in a um, time where we do have such resources at our fingertips, um, that it was simple to like say, okay, I need a starter. Let me Google, you know, elementary science things, which there's not that many of because forensic science isn't really taught to elementary kids because they typically think it's for like middle school and high school because it's more complex, but definitely just trying to find the resources online and trying, like Grace said, take some time just to convert it into something that your students would genuinely be interested in because it is a very, very interesting topic that I think elementary kids will, I pray and I hope that what we did, they will love it. Um, And so I think that anyone technically can do it. You just have to put in the time and the effort and just, you know, go online and find it. Yeah, absolutely. So Jessica, just sort of close out with you then. So, you know, I'm a teacher in in Utah or Nevada or West Virginia, um, and I love what I just heard. Um, are, is there opportunity for me to get access to any of the, the WOW content from afar? Yeah, so probably not the, the forensics unit just yet because yeah, we're, yeah. we're still kind of in the development process. But um, over the pandemic, we actually uh, introduced a WOW at Home mm-hmm. program where we added um, a lot of our experiments and some new ones um, so that it ha- the lesson plan is on our website. So wow.osu.edu. Um, and you can actually not only see the lesson plan, the supplies, we maybe have questions or an activity guide to go along with it. Um, and there are a variety of different areas. So there are about 21 um, different experiments. So if that would be probably the first step. And then we also have um, a contact sheet. If you're interested, we have given out a lot of our, our curriculum to, um, to teachers in other countries, mm-hmm. in other states, um, even here in Ohio, um, maybe not necessarily at an elementary school, maybe if it was um, icebreaker type kind of activities to get um, a a kid or maybe even um, college students interested in science. It's a variety of things that we can offer. So um, if they are interested, uh, we can just um, fill up the contact sheet on the website and know that we're we're not trying to reinvent the wheel. Um, So as Bree mentioned, you know, we do go online first Mm -hmm. to kind of look up our things. And yes, the forensics unit was uh, a bit of kind of piecing together things that had been done um, and maybe simplifying it to make it more grade appropriate. Um, But all of our, our, our activities are either have been done or kind of adapted uh, to fit our program. Um, but we do have some some unique um, individual opportunities, um, but we really just want to try to to focus on getting getting students interested in in science and uh, doing hands-on activities. So 
if you know the teacher is interested, that's great. That's actually the first step because that's why our program exists. We want the teachers to not be uh, nervous about talking about science and and finding out that science is in every everything we talk about. They can incorporate science in in reading and math, so it doesn't have to be just a science unit. So um, hopefully, if you know we're here to help in, in any way and and provide some activities or even just point you in the right direction mm -hmm. or make a connection through the university because there's a lot of faculty here at OSU that also want to provide help um, and uh, input. We work with the greenhouse and I've worked with the astronomy department and a few different departments to provide supplies to the schools as well. Yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you very much for that. And so we will make sure definitely on the program that we include all the links uh, so that folks can can get to that. So ladies, I want to thank you so much, uh, uh, both for taking time out of your day to have a conversation with us and for all the hard work that you've put into uh, the amazing WOW Wonders of Our World program. So thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for having us. Couldn't, couldn't do it without our us. students. So thank yeah. you guys. <laughs> thank you for having us too. We really appreciate talking about this. And, um, and uh, if uh, anybody's interested, also following on our social media for WOW Program OSU as well. Yeah, we will make sure that we send out all of, all of those links. So thank you Perfect. so much, ladies.